you're allowed to clap. Thank you to the Lancaster Brass Quartet for leading us this morning in worship. My friends, welcome. Welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome to worship on this holy Easter day. Just a reminder, short one, please sign in because there is no way we can remember who all is here this morning. Whether you are visiting, whether you come often, whether you come rarely, occasionally, or just for such a time as this, we have all gathered to receive good news. That is what we boldly proclaim today, that in the midst of all that brings us down, we can look up in this moment and know that we are not alone and that love always wins. I invite you to rise as you are able in body, mind, and spirit. Three days had passed. The women went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body according to custom. No doubt the journey to the tomb was heavy. Perhaps they approached with heads lowered in defeat and grief. But then they looked up and it changed their lives. The barrier that they thought would be there was gone and what they discovered instead was life. Will we look up today? Will we look up from our complacency, apathy, fear, and depression about the way things are? Will we be filled with the promise of new life and hope yet again this day? Will we be a part of the raising up of humanity? These are all the questions we bring today. We can say yes to this, for Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.
Let me just say, y'all are welcome next week. <laughs> this looks great. Let us join together in our call to worship, our opening prayer. Creator of life, in raising Christ Jesus up, though out of and beyond the chains of death, you open for us the way to, etern the, to eternal and abundant life. May our alleluias on this day float high above the ceiling of what we think we know and transcend to the heaven of what we believe and thus live. Raise us up. Renew our lives. Resurrect our dreams. Thank you for remaining with us. Through Jesus Christ, our living Savior. Amen. Let us pray together. Ever-living Ever God, God, we come, come with, with our, our heads bent down, down sometimes, overwhelmed with God, Friday's news. Raise us up, lift up our eyes, so that we might look up and see the tenacity of life in the midst of death. My friends, hear this assurance in what the psalmist proclaims. So give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say God's steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of, right, of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. In the name of Christ, new life is come. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Let us join in our song of response. See what a morning. Sing together. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Oh, did the grave clothes tomb filled with light as the angels announce Christ is Bye. 
Holy One, you come to us with power beyond all knowing. You lift all things out of the dust. You breathe love into every cell. You call us into communion with you, and you claim victory over death. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in the hearing of your word, we may receive new life. Amen. The epistle lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the lesson. Let your word abide in us, O God. The gospel lesson today comes from the gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. Listen for the still-speaking words of Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is a place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. God is still speaking. Spread the good news.
special thank you to Pastor Scott, to all of our choirs. Thank you for leading us this morning in our worship. Such a beautiful, beautiful sound. As we come to our time of prayers of the people, just a simple reminder that we are indeed a praying community and want to be praying with you. If you are worshiping here in the sanctuary, please take a moment to let your prayer request be made known by using um, the prayer cards that are in the pew rack in front of you. And then when we receive our morning offering, you can place them in the offering plate and they will be shared with our prayer chain and our prayer team this week to be prayed over. Um, if you're worshiping with us online, please take a moment to use our online prayer re request form or send me an email so that we can share your prayer requests as well. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With joy, we pray for all Christian assemblies united this morning at the empty tomb. Help us see you, O God, and those we do not expect to encounter, and remove all fear from our hearts. God in mercy, hear our prayer. With gratitude, we give you thanks for our newly baptized sisters and brothers in every land. Guide them and keep them, open their eyes again and again to your blessings. God in mercy, hear our prayer. With humility, we pray for this planet, our home. Heal, heal what we have scarred and broken. Renew the face of the earth from north to south, from east to west, so that your creation may speak to us of your goodness. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. With hope and love, we pray for the nations of the world, especially those places overwhelmed by war and conflict. By the light of the resurrection, destroy the shroud that is cast over all who live under dictatorship in the clutches of propagandists and in ignorance. Bless peacemakers who work to bring justice to their country, city, village, and household. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With compassion, wipe away the tears of all who weep. Give us the spiritual tools we need to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and comfort those who are in any trouble. Send your angels to watch over the vulnerable and the sick. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the prayers of this assembly, spoken aloud or in the silence. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. With fondness, we remember those who saw our risen Lord and witnessed to his resurrection so that we might have faith. May their words and deeds inspire us to sing our Alleluia again and again. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Passing from darkness to light, from bondage to freedom, from death to life, we commend to you, gracious and ever-living God, all for whom we pray, as we lift our hearts in to as we lift our hearts to you in prayer, as your Son taught us, using the words most familiar to you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I acknowledge to our uh, live streaming and camera folk, our tech crew, that I might be up here, I might be down there, I don't know. I'm just so excited this morning. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try up here for now um, because it is a great day. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this great, great day. Thank you for the resurrection that gives us new life. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, the spirit in this place be pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So Mark's sermon goes something like this. Christ is risen, and they said nothing to anybody because they were afraid. And we know the feeling, right? We, we know that feeling. Like, Christ is risen. Ugh. Obviously, the women did say something. Uh, Mark is our earliest gospel, and we have the story. So, obviously, they did go and tell. But I have no doubt that they got... Uh, that they left the tomb that morning having no idea what they just experienced. And that it was only a little bit later when they were able to sit and reflect and go, didn't he tell us? Didn't he tell us that he wouldn't be there? What did they expect? Well, they certainly didn't expect that. Even if he did tell them, even if they knew it might be coming, they didn't expect that. They expected to continue in their grief. It had been a rough week, to say the least. They have had lost their teacher and Lord. They saw him die. They felt alone and despair. We know the feeling. Apparently, Mark's good news requires no resurrection proofs that we get in some of the other Gospels. See, some of those other Gospels have that encounter with Jesus the ones that we want, right? We want to be Mary who confuses Jesus for the gardener in John. We want to have that experience of seeing Jesus come through the walls in the upper room, and Mark's gospel doesn't do that. Why doesn't Mark's gospel do that? I'd like to propose that Mark's gospel doesn't do that because we are invited to write the rest of the story. We are the rest of the story. We are the reason, not only that Christ, Christ was raised, but, that pe but the reason that people know about it. Our series this Lenten season has been Life is Looking Up with a hot air balloon in the, as the image. And there is a certain generation of you that if I said, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. <laughs> you know the rest of the story. You know the rest of this story. You know the line of, he is not here, he is risen. 
The messenger in Mark's gospel says, he has gone on ahead of you. It's not even a, and lo, I am with you always, that we hear in the other gospels. He has gone on ahead of you. So what does that mean? In part, it means that grief is not the end of the story. You see, I think the early disciples knew grief very well. Perhaps as well or even better as we do. You see, grief can compound our difficulty in looking up. Because we want in our times of sorrow and grief, and please don't take this as I'm making light of grief. I think of anything, Mark's gospel invites us to experience grief and to experience the profound understanding and transformation that comes beyond grief. But grief does cause us to shrink inward. Grief does cause us to sit in isolation with eyes downcast. Grief does cause us to want to not try to give up. Grief can make it incredibly difficult to look up, to choose hope, rather than the far easier menu of the things we take on when we grieve. Apathy, vices, addiction, anger, depression. We know those forces like those early disciples that make it hard to look up and hope. We know those forces because they still exist today. Communities still wrestle with poverty. Communities still have addiction to drugs, to alcohol, to other vices. Communities still fear one another. Communities still have homelessness. You name it, the list goes on. We know that feeling of those first disciples. The hope of Easter isn't a feeling of joy that gives license to ignore all of that. It is, though, an invitation to live into sort of in spite of that, to look up in spite of all that we see around us that feels like it is just going to pull us down. They didn't expect what they got. They didn't come with their glasses to view the eclipse. Right? Some of us are ready. They did it. They came with their spices, with their oils, to do the work that was expected and needed to be done. And nothing they see or don't see makes sense. I mentioned in Mark's gospel that the resurrected Jesus is not described as being with you, but that he is going ahead of you. If that is true, then death is stripped of its power. There's nothing Jesus' followers will endure, no place they can go, that Jesus isn't already there. Notice that none of our gospel message says that the world won't be a tough place to live in. Nothing says that they won't experience sorrow and grief. 
And if we continue to sort of expect that if God is here, life is a bed of roses, then we are deceiving ourselves. If Jesus goes on ahead of us and becomes that one whom we follow, which is exactly the terms that he uses when he says, you must follow me, take up your cross and follow me. It's that idea of, I am going ahead of you. If that is our trajectory, if that is the way that we are going, then we can live into our mission as a community. You see, our mission statement is, is over there, or our vision statement, I always get those confused, which is mission, which is vision. We're supposed to be living that. Right? CBUCC, and those of you who are visiting, we'll include you today. Thank you for being here. CBUCC exists to listen, to love. And I love that it doesn't stop there. To restore hope and community to all God's children. Because that is the work that Easter is about, is that restoration work that God is about. The women expect to encounter death, and they go home not encountering death. They encounter once again what it means to have Jesus alive among them. They are called once again to follow Jesus, to join in the acts of God in their community, in the world. Not necessarily despite of the world. As I mentioned, we know the monumental challenges in our communities. And so speaking words of hope this Easter day are not hollow. They are not words of joy that are not inspired. They are not words of peace that are not disguised words that mask tension. They are words of love. Self-pouring love of God who suffered even to death to be in solidarity with us and to give us new life. So what does looking up mean? What are we to expect? Maybe the question is, what should God expect from us? Because God is continuing to invite us to be a community this Easter day that is continuing to be formed and reformed. For if God can go before us beyond death, beyond the pain of the cross, if God can go before us and we can be led by the spirit, the breath, the wind of God, then our communities will be restored. On Christmas, we sing, go tell it on the mountain. We tell it, say, saying, Jesus Christ is born. Perhaps we should be singing it at Easter. Go tell it that we are reborn once again with Jesus' resurrection. That among those shattered lives who long to be made whole, the followers of Jesus will see him. I'm sure that the people who experienced an empty tomb didn't encounter what they were expecting. But I'm also sure that it got them reflecting on all that Jesus had said and done. And so part of our Easter question to us is where are we re reflecting on God's good work and the way Jesus is showing up today? I believe it is right here in this community, in this body. 
But where can you say that you last saw God show up? Where can you point to, oh yeah, there was that time when. And it may not feel like it's today. Some of us are in grief and we may not feel like God is here today because sometimes it just feels like God isn't showing up. But the good news is, is God hasn't given up. And we can recall times where we know that God was. And we do recall what God has said. And we can live into God's promises because God is faithful to those promises. While Mark's gospel can feel like uh, this is the end, the leaving it open-ended leaves it to this is the rest of the story. How we live that out, how we follow Jesus is that rest of the story. How we live into living like Jesus and bringing about love and welcome, hospitality to the stranger. How we feed those who are hungry, give water to those who are thirsty. How we visit those in prison how we stand up to injustice, will once again today, like back then, say the empire has not won. All of those death things going on are not the end. We have a go and tell moment. Sort of like show and tell. Go and tell. Go away from this place of death and endings and return to life and a new beginning. Tell. Tell the disciples who are in their disbelief because I believe that believing has doubt. Believing is not full of explanations. Believing is full of encounters not scripted and safe. But Jesus does go ahead of us and leads us the way to go. Tell. Tell the disciples, even the ones who betrayed him, that you will see him. That God lives up to God's promises. That Christ is risen, and this is only the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen.
God is our strength and our might and has become our salvation. With joy we give thanks to our God, shouting aloud and singing our praises. With these gifts we proclaim that God has done great things for us and is worthy of our worship, praise, and offering.
friends, won't you join me in this morning's prayer of dedication? Spirit of resurrection, we ask you to raise up these gifts in ways that we could not imagine. Lift up our heads and our hearts as Easter people who dare to believe that there is something we can be up to for the good of this world. So may it be. Amen. Friends, I invite you to be seated as we come to our time where we celebrate the Holy Communion today. Just a few reminders. Um, as we are uh, joining together at this table, this is not a closed table. This table is uh, open to all. You need not be a member of this church or any church to receive and partake of the gifts of God today. Also, there are elements in the back if you prefer to have a sealed uh, um, cup and uh, bread they're in the back and you can pick one of those up at your convenience we also this morning will be celebrating communion in the pew um, our Ubalate ringers will be bringing our communion anthems and so we didn't want to take away from that and so the bread will be passed first, and as after you pass the plate down your pew, your row, please uh, feel free to partake of the bread when you wish, symbolizing your personal relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. Um, then when the ushers pass the cup, if you can take a cup from the tray, the juice, um, and simply hold it, and we will all receive the cup together symbolizing our solidarity um, as the body of Christ, our oneness, our unity as the body of Christ. Um, in the center of our bread trays are uh, gluten-free wafers for those who are wondering and in need of that. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, risen is risen indeed. indeed. Lift up your heart. We lift, we lift them, up them up to God. God. Let us give thanks to God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Friends, it would have been easy on that Easter morning for Jesus to roll away the stone, to walk to the city center, and declare that death had not won. Instead, Jesus waited in the garden, went on to Galilee. He waited for the people who needed him most. He waited for Mary. He called her by name. He stopped her crying. He gave her a reason to hope. So if you have ever doubted that God's love for you is personal and specific, may the truth of this day remind you otherwise. The God you seek will meet you in the garden on your hardest days, and that same God has a seat saved at the table specifically for you. So come, come whether you are dancing for joy or like Mary, still feeling a little lost. Come with all your questions. Come with your hunger. Come whether this is your first time or your hundredth. Come because this feast is a reminder that God's table is big enough for everyone. Jesus Christ is risen today and he rose for you and for me and for everyone. So come for all are welcome. Let us pray. Resurrecting God, Mary went to the garden looking for you. The women on that morning wanted something else, were expecting something else. 2,000 years later, we follow in their footsteps. We seek after you, hungry for a garden moment, an aha moment, where we might hear you say our name, feel you in our midst. So even before the hallelujahs of this day began and begin, we empty our pockets of our prayers and remember where we've been even this week. With gratitude, we recall Maundy Thursday. We're grateful for the tables we gather around, for the friends that feel like family, and for this church, which acts as our band of disciples. We hold on to the reminder 
of you washing the disciples' feet that night and trust that the same love extends to us. With sorrow, we recall Good Friday. We grieve the depths of cruelty woven into that day, a cruelty so many in this hurting world know. So for those who are still caught in grief and loss, for those whose days have turned into night, relieve them of their suffering. Find them in the crowd, wipe their tears, hold their grief for them, and point them toward peace. And so now, God, with hope we enter into this Easter morning to find ourselves face to face with your good news. Thank you for giving us a reason to hope. Thank you for the sunrise after a long night, for the healing of bones and of hearts, for laughter that is contagious, and for the joy felt in community. Tether every gratitude and joy in our life back to you. And now as we come to the table, glorious God, we give you thanks and praise for on this day, creation sings, Christ is risen from the dead. He has burst forth from the tomb to break the tangles of despair and death. Love is come again. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the eternal chorus of rejoicing who forever sing. give you thanks, O oh God, for Jesus Christ, word made flesh, light of the world, living water, the way and truth and life. God, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread and after giving thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. So do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took a simple cup and pouring it out, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So my friends, whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your gracious acts, we offer our lives to you in service and praise as we keep the feast that Christ prepares. Bread of heaven, cup of salvation, resurrection, and life. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Gracious God, now pour out your Holy Spirit among us in this bread, in this cup, in your people, one in body, one in the blood, one with Christ, one in mission, one in ministry, in this place, in every place, in this world, and in the world to come. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. Amen.
for the new covenant. May we be unified in Christ. you to rise as you are able in body, mind, and spirit as we join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Holy, Holy gracious, gracious God, God here, here at this table your promise of life is made tangible. We have rested in the depth of your love. We have tasted your nourishing, nurturing presence. We accept you into our bodies, into our lives. Together at this table, you have offered us life. Together, by your grace, we accept the life you offer, and we give you thanks. Amen. Let's join in our sending hymn in Christ alone. In Christ alone. My hope is found, he is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, come through the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when peace are still.
My friends, a simple reminder before I offer the benediction that all of our children who are with us this morning are invited to a pinata candy scramble and an egg hunt and should go to the fellowship hall immediately following the service. Um, so you will start out there and then go from there. So join us in the fellowship hall. May God the creator in you, for you, around you, above you, beneath you, before you, and after you, be birthed through you. May the risen Christ, love made flesh, be the bread you eat, the cup you drink, the blessing you receive, the presence you become. And may the untamable Holy Spirit, energy beyond control and out of bounds, take, bless, break, and give you away. Amen and amen. Have a blessed and happy Easter.